I wanted to make this video to look back at all the new games I have played this year. And I mean all the new games that were released this year. Not old games that I have played for the first time or old games ported over. But collection games and remake of games count. I'm not here to say if this year was bad or good for gaming. Keep this in mind. No one can play every single new game every year. Not everyone played Elden Ring, a game I heard great things about, but I'm glad people got to play a great game with no BS. From time to time, I end up playing and beating a game from previous years, like Amori, Ring Fit Adventures, and Go Vacation. On occasion, I buy a game that came out this year, but I don't play it until next year. Why? I don't buy all my games day one. I wait for a price drop, and my game backlog will not let me. While I try to play many different game genres, my main genres are kart racing, rhythm, and platforming. I own a Nintendo Switch, PS5, and Xbox One. But I mostly play all my games on Switch unless the game had a big issue with performance. I'm not the type who hyped up a game or like to use the word hype. I don't give a game if it's not a 10 out of 10. I can like or have fun with a game with small issues, but I try to avoid playing bad games from online reviews most of the time. The work I did this year was with Rabbit Party of Legends, a mediocre party game with many games that remind me of the one from Rayman Raving Rabbit games on the Wii. What I'm doing in this video is offering a small review or opinion of some of the game. It will help if you have played or at least know about the game. I'm not going to review all of the games I have played because I can't think of anything to say about some of them. With all of that out of the way, I will start with the first game. I wasn't sure how I would feel about the game looking at previews, but Pokemon Legend is a fun and different game from the main Pokemon game. It has the familiar turn-based gameplay, but with a speed and power twist. The open world is fun to roam around. Catching and researching Pokemon for the first ever Pokédex is a nice touch and I'm reminded of Pokemon Snap a little bit. My only issues are no voice acting and poor graphics, but the overall game is great and a fun time. I wish I could say the same thing about Pokemon Generation 9. I will defend the game developers because this is not their fault and I feel bad for them. The game was rushed and pushed out the door because Game Freak wanted another Pokemon game this year. But we didn't need another Pokemon game or Generation 9 this year. Legend and the Gen 4 remake were not too long ago. The problem many other people and I have with the Pokemon game is the overall quality. The frame rate, performance, and other details are poor and lacking, not to mention the glitches. Looking past all of that, the game is still mediocre to me. The gameplay is still the Pokemon I know, and the quality of life options are good. The new Pokemon, the region, the story, 
and the character didn't do anything for me. The lack of voice acting again doesn't help, making everything lifeless. The open world is a good idea, but it feels empty and boring. I didn't feel like exploring every part of the game or trying to find all the new and familiar Pokemon. And again, everything felt lifeless. Legend was great, but it did need a little more time in the oven. Yet now needed a whole year and it a letdown because of the quality. Only time will tell if the game will be better. If you didn't watch my review of the game, let me sum it up for you. The quality and other details in the map are great and make the game stand out. However, the game itself is lacking in activities. The amount of music in Just Dance Plus compared to Just Dance Unlimited is very poor. And you cannot use your unlimited membership for the new service. Keep in mind, unlimited and put are basically the same thing. I'm aware music from unlimited will be added to put every week. I know that over time the game might have more stuff to do, hopefully, but only time will tell. Down. Capcom Down Fighting Collection. With collection games, I feel like you can't really mess them up, but you can't do wrong. The ones I have are the Cowabunga Collection, Pac-Man Museum, and Capcom Fighting. These are the great collection games, and I didn't have any major problem. The Turtles one had a good variety of fighting, beat em up and thought throwing games, including that one infamous game. Sometimes there's so much shit on the screen, the game goes to slow motion. Don't you love it when Nintendo games do that? The Pac-Man one had games that focused more on high score gameplay. Of course, you have the original Pac-Man and newer ones like Championship Edition and Battle Royale. The Capcom one had fighting games and one puzzle game. It mostly favors Street Fighter and Night Warrior titles. I'm glad to have the chance to play Red Earth, a fighting RPG, and have Pocket Fighter on the Switch. I want to support remakes of older games. It gives people a better and cheaper way to play older games. There are so many games I would love to see a remake, a re-release, or maybe part of a collection. Pac-Man World Repack is a remake of the PS1 game. I don't remember much of the original game as a kid. Regardless, Namco did a great job with its remake, fixing a problem that needed to be made. Namco did have to remove mid pac man for copyright reasons, which I understand. Canola Theory is a collection of two game remakes. Both games are 2.5D platformers from the PS1 and PS2 eras. The Switch version does have a small frame rate drop here and there, but nothing too big to stop someone's overall enjoyment of both games. How to the Dead remake is... Well, a remake of the first game. I never played the first game before, so I can't tell you how it compared to the original. For me, it does a good enough job at a game from its era, and it even had the same bad voice acting. You must stop, Kyrian, or else something terrible will happen. Don't worry, he'll pay for this. Well, I prefer Bayonetta 1 and 2 because of the plot, 
gameplay and perform it, Bayonetta 3 still offered the same great action from Platinum Games. This time around, you have three playable characters offering their own playstyle. The game does have frame rate and performance issues, but it didn't happen at the moment where it mattered the most. Nintendo and Omega Force team up to create Free Hope. The main gameplay comes from Omega Force, while elements like weapon weakness and character interaction come from Fire Emblem. The main reason why I wanted to play the game is for the plot. I believe it in a different timeline to the Free Houses game. While I would love for the gameplay to be a real Fire Emblem game, not a side game, Free Hope is still enjoyable. I know some people forgot this game came out this year, and I don't blame anyone. The game tried to recreate the feeling of the Wii Sports game, but for the Switch. It does the job right in gameplay and control. While I'm glad the game is here, but another part of me is thinking it's a little too late. It would have been nice if the game was released around the first or second year of the Switch. But regardless, it's a good game that does what it needs to do. While there were a few 3D Kirby games before, this is Kirby's first main 3D game. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can't believe it took this long for Kirby's gameplay to go in 3D. Everything you know about 2D Kirby games is translated well into 3D, with no issue with the Kirby formula. If you are looking for more Kirby, Kirby Dream Buffet will help your hunger. You play minigame and raid to the finish to collect the most fruit to achieve victory. This game is just too pure and cute, but I do wish there was more to the game itself. Splatoon 3 is hands down the game I have put the most time into this year. I have done a video on the whole series already, so I don't need to repeat everything here. If you have played Splatoon before, you should feel right at home, with new modes, customization, update, and differences. Of course, the game has more to show with future updates, because not everything is here yet. The game finally has Big Run mode, Wick Run is the same as Salmon Run, but it played on a level normally used for multiplayer battles. Splatoon 3 does have shortcomings. Disconnecting is still an issue. Salmon Run frame rate dropped heavily. If you're not aware, playing the mode on a high difficulty and when a lot is going on will cause the game frame rate to lower big time making it unbearable. And last, everything relating to gear and upgrading or money in general. The amount of money or super snails needed to upgrade your gear is too high. It feels like the game is very cheap with money no matter what you do. Other issues like each shop being limited to a small number and Splatfest being the only way to get super snailed which add to limitation, waiting, and grinding. This can be corrected by giving players more money and snails without doing so much grinding or lowering the cost for items and upgrading. Other than small issues, the game is one of my favorites this year. Well, that was all the games I played this year. To me, it's another year in gaming. The opinion and game speak for themselves. 
I realized some of the games I have played this year have frame rate issues or some type of performance problem in some areas. But wait, I feel like I'm forgetting something. What could it be? Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah. I forgot to check how much money I used on games this year. Alright. Um, doing math. Buy two, get one free. That's my total. I'm buying fewer games next year.